Seven Exercises for Spondylolisthesis with Dr. Noah Volz. Spondylolisthesis is a slippage of one of the vertebral bodies um, with respect to the vertebral body, usually right below it. Uh, this is really a imaging diagnosis. Um, it, it's often associated with some sort of pain, either a mechanical or radicular pain. Um, and there are a few different types of this type of spondylolisthesis and, um, grada and um, gradations based on the severity of the slippage. So this video will primarily look at uh, the cases that have come later in life that are not congenital, uh, the acquired cases that are a low severity, those can be uh, best addressed with exercises. <clears throat> so even though um, many people may have spondylolisthesis, not all of those people have, have pain. And so we need to remember that um, pain is multifactorial. It's not only a physical phenomenon. There are factors that may need to be addressed besides the physical factors that we address here in this video. So the components of spondylolisthesis um, is the, the spinal joints. So again, the slippage of the vertebral body um, above uh, compa uh, compared to the vertebral body below. Um, all of these spinal joints are covered in ligaments. So the ligaments must need to be compromised or damaged in some way in order to allow this slippage to happen. Um, usually there's uh, what's called a pars defect, which is a, a crack, which is a, a crack um, in one of the, in an aspect of the vertebral body that allows this slippage to happen. Um, and the muscles, the muscles are also holding these joints in place. So when there is this damage in order for those spinal joints to slip forward, uh, the muscles must not be able to hold it in place. So we use orthopedic tests in order to diagnose spondylolisthesis, um, or at least to tell us that we need to get any sort of x-ray or other imaging in order to figure out if that's uh, the type of pain that we're working with. And so the orthopedic tests are the, the shear test, Yeoman's, and the lumbar instability cluster. And that's what we use in the clinic to figure out if this is what's going on. Uh, and again, uh, remember that imaging abnormalities are normal for most people. So with spondylolisthesis, is a slightly different uh, because of the severity of the symptoms, but there are people that have uh, spondylolisthesis that actually don't have any pain or any limitations in their function. So even if you have this, there are things that can be done um, in order to address it. So you can be like those people pain, even if they do have this. So the phase one spondylolisthesis exercises are the hamstring stretch, the dead bug, and the abdominal brace. So the hamstring doorway stretch, you will lay on your back, you will place, place one leg inside of the doorway, and then bring the other leg up the side of the wall adjacent to the doorway. You'll start by bringing the knee towards the chest and then gently sliding the heel up the wall. Uh, if you get all the way to the top, you can gently bring the toes towards the head to get more stretch, to get more stretch through the hamstring. And then you'll just hold this gently. The dead bug, you're gonna lie on your back and you're gonna place the hands above the chest, the knees above the hips, with the feet in line with the knees. Usually I just recommend maintaining this position. There is a more challenging variation of the dead bug where you're extending the opposite arm and leg, but at first it's best just to hang out in the, the more gentle position in this phase one. Next is the abdominal brace. So you're laying on your back, you bend your knees, sliding your feet in, in close to the buttocks. Um, and then you start to breathe with the abdomen. And then you want to gently expand the abdomen outward. So I call this intra-abdominal pressure. And then you maintain that expansion on the exhale. So you're, you're creating some, uh, some, 
some uh, activation through the abdomen. In order to test this, you can slide one of the heels away from you and place your hands on the abdomen and just feel the, the bracing or the engagement of the abdomen as you do this in order to maintain that. Uh, the goal is to be able to maintain the, maintain the bracing as you inhale and exhale. It's a little bit easier on the inhale and slightly more challenging on the exhale. So the phase two spondylolisthesis exercises are the kneeling psoas stretch, the clam with band, the glute bridge with band, and the side bridge. So in the kneeling psoas stretch, you're going to come into a kneeling position with the knee underneath the hip and the uh, knee just above the ankle. And then gently, uh, you'll go ahead and shift the weight slightly forward so that weight slightly forward so that front knee comes out over the toes and you feel a little stretch through the front of the back thigh. Next is clamshells with band. So you're gonna lay on your side, support your head with your arm or a pillow and wrap the knees or just above the knees onto the thighs and then bring the, the knees are bent and the heels are in line with the hips. Then you're drawing the knee up towards the sky, feeling the resistance in the band, either holding at the top or doing sets. This is the glute bridge with band. Go ahead and lay on your back, bend the knees, slide the heels in close to the buttocks, feet on the floor, loop the band around the hips, holding the band down with your hands. On your inhale, go ahead and lift the hips up in line with the knees, pressing through the feet gently, and feel the resist feet gently, and feel the resistance against the band. You can hold here, or you can do reps. Now coming into side bridge. This is the easier variation of side bridge where you're on the forearm and the knees, as opposed to the forearm and the sides of the feet. So you're on your side, you're on the floor, knees and hips are on the floor, and then you lift the hips up in line with the shoulders, staying here or doing reps. So everybody is different. In general, I say that you want to do about 60 to 80% of your effort in these positions. Somebody with spondylolisthesis, I would err on the side of doing less, um, at least until you start to get used to doing the exercises. Um, so that might be one uh, one set of 10 reps, something like that. And then you're uh, over time, you're going to need to create some variability. So maybe that's at first to modify it and make it easier. And long term, you may want to increase the weight that you're using or increase the complexity or the challenge of the exercise. So um, I'm happy to help guide you and personalize and customize your exercise your exercise program. If you have spondylolisthesis, this is something that I've worked with before, and I'm happy to help you if you have this diagnosis. Uh, it's always great to work with somebody who has experience with these types of conditions. So my approach is threefold. Reset the system, reinforce the system, and retrain the body. So this is, uh, these exercises fit into that third category of retraining. In the reset phase, we'll do um, maybe some adjustments, maybe some soft tissue work, whatever we can do to kind of create a window of opportunity, new pattern. And then we'll reinforce that new pattern. Um, that new pattern is one where you have less pain. And then we'll retrain your body to get strong around that new pattern. So uh, I, as I said, the best way to get results is to work directly directly with a practitioner or somebody who can guide you through this process, like a coach who's you know seen this before. Um, if these exercises are gonna work for you, you'll, you'll feel results immediately within the first seven days. Um, if they're not working for you, then it's best to work with somebody directly. So, th so thank you so much for watching and I hope you found that useful and I look forward to working with you in the future.